Welkom. 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 In die. In, in die. Werkswinkel. Werkswinkel. Welkom in die werkswinkel. Welkom in de werkswinkel. Yes. Ja, is zo goed. Ik doe het op mijn huis. Howdy and welcome back to the workshop, everybody. We've got Niels Vandenberg from Black Dragon Forge joining us today. Niels is a master smith in the American Bladesmith Society. That's what we keep on selling everyone. Yep. He paid them lots of money to make it happen, but it worked. Yes, it did. Today, we're going to be digging in and doing some chef's knives. Niels is an expert on daggers and all things pointy and stabby. And we spent the first couple days in the workshop building a very cool stiletto dagger. But now we get to jump into my realm, which is... The really cool stuff. The slicey things. Chef's knives. So Niels hasn't spent a whole lot of time making chef's knives, so we're going to get to run him through the ropes. Crash course, one day chef's knife build here in the shop. Niels, how do you feel? Let's do it. You've been very reluctant this whole time about building Yeah, chef's knives. hitting stuff with a hammer. Not, I don't know, man. Not excited at all for Nay. it. We've got some Don Hansen III W2, which is an insanely good knife steel. We've got some fun materials. We've got a design. We're going to be modeling it after this, which is my personal chef's knife right here. Uh, it is a 8-inch Yudo uh, with a Western-style handle and an integral bolster. Just kind of a nice flowy design uh, in my style, and I think we're both going to be shooting for the same shape, which is this. So with that, let's go ahead and fire up the forge and start forging this stuff down. Are you tired of eating junk foods that don't fill you up while you work in the shop? Try making a change to healthy pre-made meals by Factor. Factor makes chef-prepared, never-frozen, fresh meals, and they send them straight to your door. That ranges between 4 to 18 meals per week, kind of whatever you want. And they've got keto, chef's choice, vegan, veggie options that has meat and vegetables and all that good stuff, which is an incredibly easy way to get into healthy, quickly prepared meals. So especially if you have a busy lifestyle, you're working a lot, you're in school, whatever it is, and you need something that's gonna fuel you well, Factor is an excellent option for that. Now, it's super nice because there's no meal prep that you have to do, there's no mess to clean up, there's no dishes to do even if you don't want there to be. You can have high quality, protein rich, calorie smart, whatever you want, ready on the go. It takes about two minutes to heat up one of these meals in the microwave. I don't actually have a microwave in the shop, but I do have a very, very fancy even heat oven. Mm. Maybe not the best to do this in a oven like this. This is a nice, toasty, quickly heated up meal. Bam. Buffalo chicken breast with some cauliflower, pepper jack cauliflower mash. Yep. So if you're interested in getting high quality, fast meals, to get some good nutrition in you, go to go.factor75.com forward slash willstelter60 for 60% off your first box. That's a heck of a deal if you ask me. So with that, let's jump back on in to making these chef's knives with Niels.
needle is here, and it's supposed to be right there. So we're gonna have to finish up our forgings right quick. Thankfully, we're both pretty much right there. Well, we're a couple hours in now. We've got our blades forged and annealed, normalized and annealed. Nils, how are you feeling? Tired, buddy. Tired. You are breaking me. Yeah. Making me work on a vacation. I'm doing my best. I'm trying to get every ounce of work out of him that I can. It's working. I already had yes. to go break his plane so he couldn't leave earlier than he was planning on. Just another American exploiting African labor. <laughs> what? Is that what's happening? <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to put that on. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta put that on, man. We got our knives cooling down right now. Well, next step is to hop into the grinding room, get them profiled, get them lightly ground, uh, rough ground, so we can prepare to do our hamones. Uh, this steel W2 is known for being really good for doing the hamones, the smoky white, ghosty uh, ashi. Is that the word? Bless you. They're quite thick right now. We'll probably grind them down a little bit thinner. Might slap them on the surface grinder and just deck down the blades a little bit. Um, and then freehand grind in our bolsters. Does that work for you? Why? Uh, it's easier. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm there. Better, but I don't know if I've got the shape. I think it's a little fat up here. You must be a master smith or something like that. Then. Master grinder, mm. not a smith. That feels really good. Master whittler <laughs> of the steel. Uh oh. Hey, yeah, okay. <laughs> Damn. All right, we'll be back in a moment. That spine all coated up. So what this does is it basically allows you to have a heat sink in the back of your knife. Um, you don't want it on the edge because it won't harden because the martensite, the hardened crystalline grain structure of our steel, won't set. And so instead it forms a different grain structure. Is it perlite that it forms? Uh, martensite and perlite, yeah. Squishy Auntie Pearl and hard assed Uncle Martin. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never forget it again. Yeah, this stuff is super... I think it's probably oil-based. Attention, irritant. Hey! So it's gonna start screaming at me. And really irritate the living crap out of me. Irritating to eyes and skin <laughs> on contact. <laughs> yeah, not yet. It's good. It's obviously for Americans only. From what I understand, really thin layers work well. How do you, how do, you do hamones? <laughs> Uh, are you, what are you, what skill are you using? Uh, Don Hansen W2. <laughs> okay, so what we figured out is that we just need to get lucky on these and then be scientific with it next time. You must not wait for it to dry. It's dry-ish. It's hot in there, it'll dry quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is some puff pastry if I've ever seen it. 
I don't know if that's going to work. You see how puffy mine was? <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Water retention is a real thing. Alrighty. It stayed on. That totally like, that was totally hollow. I've got a sharp bar of 01 here if you want to knock it against that instead. Thank you, I'll do that in the next one. That didn't sound good. Flex that in the mouth. Oh, the hummus good. The knife not so much. Round with that big piece of a one on it. Oh, is, did you do that outside and then it? Yes, because he's scraping it off with that big piece. Yeah. And then I went over the edge and I went whing. Oh, that's nice. And did it again, and then all of a sudden it went thunk. And I was like, well, that couldn't. Didn't sound good. But the but the actual like ashi of it is spicy. Yeah, that's pretty nice actually. I mean, I uh, could have done thinner fingers. I think mine has a little bit drippier action. I stopped grinding on mine and threw it right into temper after. <laughs> so it cracked, and then it cracked a lot more. Um, Ooh, gosh. You can see daylight mm -hmm. through it. That's bad. So Ooh, I've got three of the four it. wind directions in that crack. <laughs> Quench. I don't know. Well, since Niels's blade cracked, we decided not to do a one-day knife because that would have meant that I was finishing out my knife and just kind of wasting the precious time that we had while he was here. So it's been a couple days. I've had a couple days to hang out and calm down. Now it's time to get back onto this guy because I have something special planned for it. I'm about to leave on a big old trip to Italy and to India. My buddy in Italy, Oliver Goldschmidt, has been one of the biggest inspirations for me in knife making and just the way that he designs and does his constructions and all of that has really influenced me a whole lot. And so I want to give this knife to him as a gift, uh, but unfortunately there's a dot of unhardened steel, some perlite got stuck down there by the edge, and I need to get rid of that. So I'm going to throw this in the oven for another normalizing cycle at 1575 degrees, and then from there I'm going to reclay it and re-quench it to hopefully get a little bit different pattern in my hamon and get rid of that dot of unhardened steel at the edge. Well, it's cooled down now. Got that cool layer of oxidation on there. All right, it's been austenizing for about five minutes in the oven. Juicy. All right. Well, that time a lot of the clay popped off. I hope it wasn't too thin. Because that would be sucky. You can definitely see where it was on there. I'm gonna throw it in for a temper cycle so it doesn't snap on me. And uh, then we'll check the old ham sandwich. Hamon. As you guys saw, I hardened the knife. It actually had a terrible hamon. The action up here was awful. And so I decided to redo it, and I was like, I'll just redo it, but I won't film it, and we'll do some movie magic, because Isaiah's a witch. He's whatever the man version of a witch is. But that didn't work out either. 
The actual action of the Hamon is very cool, but it got another soft spot near the edge, just like it did the first time, right in the same spot, you can't see it. Um, and I think I messed up my acid somehow, and so I can't etch it, but it has a soft spot right there that goes all the way through. It's like 3 16ths of an inch away from the edge, which is four or five millimeters. Uh, so way too close for a chef's knife. For a chef's knife, you wanna have at least a good, probably three quarters or two centimeters, 20 mil. Uh, of room along the edge because in the life of a chef's knife you want to be able to thin it out and sharpen that thing back and you want to have plenty of room to get a full life out of your knife. So having it that close to the edge is just unacceptable. And unfortunately, I don't have any time to fix it. I'm headed off tomorrow morning to go uh, visit my friend Oliver Goldschmidt and my other friend Jordan Lamothe. Oliver lives in Italy, Jordan is in India right now, and so I am going to have to table this one for a little bit. It is a failure, but not in the same way, not in the catastrophic failure like Niels's was. This one is fixable, but it's just kind of fighting me. Uh, and that kind of happens from time to time. You guys see it on the channel a lot. Normally when it happens, kind of glaze over it, do some movie magic, make it look like it didn't fight me for a really long time when in reality it did. But here we don't have time to do that because I'm leaving. So I was really hoping to have this knife done by the time that I left, but that's just not simply possible. I've spent more time heat treating this knife than it should have taken to finish out the whole blade. And that's just how it goes sometimes. Anyone who makes anything understands it, especially when they're at a high level. It's kind of funny, every once in a while, you'll have a project that comes through that just wants to fight you. For Isaiah, it's oftentimes uh, like the computer crashing or the editing program not working. That happens every once in a while. It's not all the time. Every once in a while. And he's really good at what he does, but every once in a while, the video will fight him. So we're gonna have to call it there on the progress for this chef's knife in this video. It was not a one day chef's knife. I spent like 12 hours just heat treating this thing. But we did get to have a ton of fun working in the shop with Niels. We actually did get to build another project, a Italian Renaissance style stiletto dagger. It's kind of what Niels specializes in, European style daggers. And these stilettos specifically are something that he's very well known for. So it was a lot of fun to get to build this with him. We did a twisted Damascus W's blade. We used wrought iron for the fittings and we used a lovely piece of fossilized walrus ivory for the handle. This guy is as I'm currently filming, being auctioned off. So by the time this video goes live, it will have sold on my Instagram, but there will be more of them. So don't worry, there'll be a chance to get in on stuff like this in the future. So a huge shout out to Niels. Please go check him out on Instagram, Black Dragon Forge. His Instagram is hilarious. He posts a lot of great educational content on how to build daggers and his whole carving and designing process. It's super, super interesting. And he is a swell dude. So go check him out. Oh, he also has a YouTube channel, uh, which will be linked in the description down below. Huge thank you to Niels for coming over and hanging out. I had a ton of fun. He's going to be back on the channel, so don't worry. Thank you to Isaiah for being excellent at everything all the time. And the next time I'll be talking to you guys, it will probably be from an airport or a plane or a different country. So thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.